Hi Gate. How are you all today morning? Good morning. Today is 19th October 2023. My name is T. S. V. Raghavan and I live in Chennai, Tamil Nadu, India. This is my spiritual vlog on YouTube. Har Dhan, H A R D A N, Har Dhan, Hari Bol, T R S V, Nectar, N E C T A R, Nectar. In this particular vlog, in all my previous videos, we have been discussing about the knowledge and information that we have gleaned through the study of spiritual books, scriptures, contemplation on the material universe and meditation on the spiritual universe. This particular video is no exception to that rule. In fact, it is a mere continuation of all that we have been doing in all my previous videos. Kindly subscribe to this vlog and press the bell icon so that I may keep reminding you of my past, present and future videos. So let us continue with the topic of discussion for today's video. In the past few videos, we have been trying to analyze two terms that play a very important role in the psyche of every human living entity in this society whether male or female. These two terms are intelligence and cunning. We all know by now that when the head rules the heart of a human living entity, he or she becomes intelligent. Whereas, when the heart of the same human living entity begins ruling his or her head, then the same intelligence turns into cunning. Here, the head and the heart both belong to the fourth layer of material body that envelops a spirit soul. This fourth layer is known as the gross body. Hence, when we are talking about head and heart which are a part of the gross body of a human living entity, we are talking about the astral mind of feelings and emotions that makes part of the head and the etheric body of senses which are five in umber that is sight, hearing, smell, taste and touch which forms the part of the heart of the same gross body. So the tussle is between the astral mind and the etheric senses. When the astral mind, that is head, rules the etheric senses, that is the heart, then the person becomes intelligent. Whereas, when the etheric senses, that is the heart, starts ruling 
the astral mind that is the head that the same person's intelligence gets converted into cunning and how we are going to discuss one particular case history which will make us understand this and authenticate the validity of these two terms in the psyche of a human living entity whether male or female we have already discussed several case histories watching this theory but today's particular case history is unique in itself it is probably true but being ancient it terms are to be apocryphal there may be a lot of genuineness in this story but we do not have any proof to prove that such characters in really existed or what was their identity it is a fact that such characters did really exist but their identity is unknown the only thing is this story has the colorings of both the head ruling the heart making a person intelligent and the heart ruling the head that makes a person cunning so let us continue with this story to understand this theory of intelligence and cunning better in the ancient times or the medieval times there was one particular very large village or township in the country of india from which i hail this particular township was buzzing with activity and thriving with business actions one such businessman or trader was one very intelligent enterprising and young man here we will take a detour i mentioned intelligent i said so because in this case this man had ruled his heart and that is precisely the reason why he was intelligent enough to indulge in commerce trading distribution and business soon this person set up a business worked hard and came up in leaps and bounds he became very financially successful and he made a lot of wealth soon he became a respectable person in the business community as well as the society in that particular large village or township eventually this man got married when he got married his wife soon gave birth to his only offspring a son because this offspring was the only child in the family it was brought up in the lap of luxury with a golden spoon in its mouth both its parents the businessman and his own mother the wife or you may say father the businessman and mother the wife doted on that child so much so that knowingly or unknowingly deliberately or otherwise by default or by design the spoilt this child silly however they were not aware of this fact 
When this boy grew up, he also got married to a beautiful young woman. For the time being, or for some a temporary period, everything was well, but then Nemesis struck all of them. Destiny does not pardon or ignore any human being, and this family and its members were no exceptions to that rule. This boy, this young man, the son of the businessman, suddenly got into negative or bad company. When he did so, slowly but steadily he got addicted to gambling. His father, the businessman, was extremely wealthy and so for the time being money was no problem for this young man, the son. He began squandering his money right, left and center. Again here it is very evident that this boy's heart crept in and began ruling his senses, common sense and head. Thus this guy did not become cunning but at least ignorant and stupid. The father was extremely worried with what was happening in his life. He warned his beloved son against this practice of gambling. But this boy had by now become a spoiled brat. He started neglecting the business and started spending his own time and money on gambling, thinking that he is going to earn some profit in gambling. Soon this old man, due to his worries, fell ill and took to the bed. This boy was now free to do what he pleased. This old man could not concentrate on the business anymore and it all fell upon this squandering, irresponsible son. Despite warnings from both mother and father, this boy continued to squander his father's hard-earned millions in gambling and other merrymaking. One day the father expired and soon after the mother also expired. Now this boy was the king of what he saw in his own kingdom left to him by his own father. He was an inheritor of millions of rupees given by that father for this boy's welfare. But this boy continued to squander that money in gambling. His own beautiful wife tried to warn him and stop him but to no avail. One day she got very upset and angry and had a huge showdown with the same boy, her husband. One on that night, this dainty lady left this guy for good in a half. She packed her bags and went to the adjacent village where her own father was already a very successful businessman. This guy did not bother one bit. He did not care that his own loving wife had left him. Now he was alone and absolutely free. 
Slowly, he began squandering more and more of his own father's hard-earned wealth. But wealth is usually, howsoever large the amount may be in quantity, one day starts dwindle, dwindling and eroding. This, guys, wealth also was no exception. He began losing money in gambling sessions right, left and center. All his self-serving cronies made money because of this guy's stupidity, ignorance and lavishness. When they were through with him, when they had made all their money, these guys left this young man high and dry in the market. Because he was never interested in business, the goodwill and creditworthiness that his father had built had also eroded by this time. Thus, this guy, who had also been taking financial loans from the market while his father was alive, found to his shock and dismay that not only he did not have any money, but that the market also coldly refused to extend him any loan. This guy was left in tatters in shabby clothes in the center of that particular large village or township. He had nowhere to go and he did not know what to do with his life. Undeterred by this circumstances in which he found himself, this guy decided to go to the Addisar town to meet his own ex-father-in-law and to ask for some financial help. One night, this young man left for his Addisar town to meet his own father-in-law. It was very dark by the time this guy reached that township. It was already midnight or even after midnight when he reached the house of his own father-in-law. This father-in-law had his own shop just opposite his own sprawling house in that village. When this boy was about to enter into the gate of that house, he suddenly saw some disturbance there. He crouched to one corner in the dark and waited to see what was happening. One another young man came out of the same compound in which the house of that father-in-law was located. This guy held his breath and waited to see what is going to happen. That young man came out and walked towards the closed shutters of his own father-in-law's shop which was in the opposite side. This guy opened the shutter lightly and got in. This guy, our hero, the squandering wastrel of a young man, did not know what to do. But before he could understand what was happening, he saw that the other young man was quickly followed by a very beautiful woman who also followed that young man into the shop. 
in the street light this guy saw the face of that woman clearly suddenly he realized that he had seen this woman somewhere but he could not place her anyway when this woman entered the shop along with the other in man our hero went near the shop put his ears on the wall and began a listening to to the conversation between the other two persons who were inside the shop and then he saw that that beautiful woman was none other than his own wife who had left him a year ago this guy could not place the young man but it was evident that this woman was besotted with that young man here again we shall take a detour this woman had allowed her own lust and etheric senses to rule her astral body of mind her her head heart had begun ruling her head and that is why she was taking such a full hardy decision of falling head over heels with this unknown young man despite being married to our hero our hero breathlessly waited and tried strained his own ears to listen to the conversation between the other two and then he was in for a very horrible shock this woman who had once been his own wife now told the other young man darling you are my love of life you are my best thing that happened to me in this world i want to help you come up in life so that we get married and live happily ever after for that i will give you one hint from which you can pick up the pieces this hero of ours was horrified by this monologue from his own beautiful ex-wife the etheric senses and heart of this woman had taken complete control over her own astral mind of feelings and emotion and her own head she had suddenly become totally cunning all her intelligence had got poisoned because of her evil thoughts this woman continued i was once married to an idiot in the nearby town this fool that is our own hero is the only son of a very rich businessman who is no more and his wife has also passed on we had a very big house in that adjacent town this wastel of my ex husband has squandered away almost all his own father's hard earned money however my father in law was extremely wise he filled four cauldrons of metal with gold coins and buried them under every post of 
that house that is the four pillars of that house have pots of gold underneath them but this idiot of my ex husband is totally unaware of this so i would suggest to you my dear darling that you must travel to that house and offer to buy that house from my wasteful ex husband that guy always needs hard liquid cash to gamble in his gambling pursuit if you offer to purchase this house that idiot will gladly agree our own hero was listening to his was about to die of shock sorrow and anger but he hung on this woman said once you buy that house we will wait for some time and then dig out all the four pots of gold take the money and vanish to some other township where you can start your own business after you do this we too will get married and live happily ever after our shocked husband was now an isolated unit he felt like the whole heaven had fallen on his dainty head for the first time he came to know about the true intentions of his beautiful but venomous ex-wife who was showing her own true venomous fangs and her own malicious and sadistic cunning our hero came back to his own house noiselessly next day he dug out all the four pots of gold in the house and took all the gold and put it in some safe place in his own house then he filled all these four pots with coal and buried them exactly from where he had dug them out under the pillars of that particular house then this guy waited here again we shall take a detour for a very long time this guy had been ignorant and stupid his senses lust and heart ruled his head and that is why he could not see things clearly but now for the first time the actual businessman within him which had come to him through his genes from his same father took charge of his own psyche his head had begun ruling his heart after a very very long time this guy waited for the other young man to come to him and offer to buy this house that happened a few days later this guy was he so happy that this was happening that he feigned total innocence to what had transpired between this man and his own ex wife he gladly sold that house to the man for a hefty sum instead of squandering away that money in gambling he took that along with the gold that he had now inherited and left that township he went to another place where he was a stranger 
and where he could live as a stranger ever after. Meanwhile, this young man told that cunning and conniving beautiful young lady that he had purchased this house. This woman was delighted. After all, her etheric senses and heart was still ruling her own head. She was so careless that she did not bother to look hither and thither to see if someone else was listening to her demonic plans. She could never imagine that her own husband was listening to what was transpiring between her and her new love. Both of them came to that particular house. They dug out all the poor pot, uh, pots and were happy that now they had so much of gold. But when they opened the mouths of those pots, their heart turned to water. Instead of gold, they saw only coal inside. This made this woman shocked and distraught. But the man who was her lover suddenly became very, very angry and malicious. He felt that his own lady love had taken him for a ride. Just like this woman, this guy also was allowing his own heart to rule his head. He felt that he had been royally taken for a ride by this woman and that this woman was not what she looked to be but was out to deceive this love. Suddenly, this guy's brain also started working. His own head began ruling his heart. He felt, what could you expect from such characterless woman who had already left her own husband and was ready to deceive that noble man? This woman could never be trusted. Now Nemesis struck this young lady love. Her new lover dropped her like a ton of bricks and left her for good. He refused to marry her as a result of which this woman was left high and dry in the middle of nowhere. She could not go back to her father, nor could she remain in this township where she had come as a daughter-in-law. The public had already seen her with the new love, and so all the respect that she had gained till now withered away in a jiffy. This woman was left forlorn, properly without money and without a life carrier or a husband or lover. This dragged her to the pits of hell. Meanwhile, that young man, our own hero, left this township, went to another township and there began working hard just like his own father had done decades ago. He worked hard, started his own business and just like his father, after some time, 
came up in leaps and bounds. Now his head was firmly placed on his shoulders and it totally ruled his heart. This young man stopped gambling and other vices and concentrated on his own business which took him not only to ordinary success but to DC highs. This shows to us how important it is for us all to allow our head to rule our heart. When we are intelligent in this manner, we can reach the skies if we try. As Mr. Napoleon said in his quote, cease this ambition, limitless in industry and a determination to success to succeed are the three top keys of our purpose in life. If we take a leaf out of the lives of the characters of this story, we will realize this that if we have our head rule our heart, we become intelligent and that is the key to our material success. Once we achieve all our material success to saturation point, we slowly turn to spiritualism and meditation. Material thinking is called contemplation and spiritual thinking is called meditation. Once we start meditating on ourselves, one day we realize our true identity as a spirit soul. Not only that, our own spirit soul also gets evolved in that process. The next step after self-realization is to get liberated from this endless cycle of birth and death in this material world. Once we achieve that liberation which in Sanskrit is called moksha, then the last step is for us all to get delivered to the Supreme Personality of Godhead as fully evolved souls. That must be our true purpose in life, regardless of our own status in this society. We must remember this so that we also become materialistically and spiritually successful and we reach DC heights both materialistically and spiritually. This is all I wanted to talk in this particular case history. Kindly let me know what you think of my talk on this particular subject. Please give me your own expert views, thoughts and ideas so that I may blend everything together for the sake of this society. Before concluding, let me remind you that I am also a published author with Amazon Kindle and paperback. I write on spiritualism, fiction and assorted subjects. Spiritualism happens to be my favorite subject. Till we meet in my next video, it is good morning from TSV Raghavan.